Hi, this is Dan for Pico America, and today I'm going to show you how to install a Pico 35040 RC receiver kit into a Pico Mogul or 060 tender. You won't even need the loco, the tender is where all the wiring is, and it's really just a few wires. Included in the kit are the pocket remote, the receiver board, and the rectifier board. Of course, you'll also want to have your tender for the installation, a few screwdrivers like our Pico screwdrivers, and to be cautious and follow the directions, a heat sink. For simplicity, we used a computer heat sink that cost about $3. This is useful for those running hours and hours or on battery power. Now on to the install. We use a towel on our working surface to keep things safe. With the tender upside down, you'll find six screws. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So now we loosen and remove these six screws. And since this is a video, we can speed it up for you. Once all these screws are removed, you can turn over the tender and the shell lifts right off. The easiest install would be a parallel installation where you would only move the two wires coming from the track to the receiver and then the two wires back into this PC board. But in this video we chose to do a direct installation where we will be replacing the PC board with the receiver board. You can start by removing the outer wires. That would be the gray and the white and the tape that helps to hold those, the extra bit of wire in place. Then, after this, we can fast forward through removing the rest of the wires. Last, you can remove the four screws from the PC board and then remove the PC board itself. If it makes it easier, you can use the tender shell to hold the wires out of the way while you screw the 35040 red receiver board to the front of the tender chassis. Using the instructions that came in the box, we can use the color-coded wiring diagram to make wiring simple. We first start with the black wire that leads to the tender LED light. There should be a normal wire side and a pigtail joint that leads to a socket. Connect the shorter black wire coming from below to the socket, and then screw the black wire into the receiver board. These black wires are common positive wires for the lighting. The next wire is the short yellow wire from below. This is the front light. After this, the wiring diagram shows the red wire. This is to make sure you notice it's for the rear light. Don't use the red wire from the logo, but use the yellow wire from the rear LED lighting. Then we attach the green wire coming from the logo. The next four screw terminals are not needed for this installation, but they would be used if you were installing sound. We are getting close to finished, but here we want to insulate the white and gray wires that we don't need. So some simple electrical tape or heat shrink tubing, if you have it, will keep those wires safe from touching anything else. From there, we can insert the gray and white wires into the green rectifier board. These wires take power from the track and send it to the receiver. We want to use input A terminals. After that, the blue wire is attached to the bottom of the red receiver board and the red wire is connected at motor 2 right next to it. These wires are motor power going back to the loco. Now that all the wiring is in place, you want to make sure the green rectifier board is switched to get power from your choice of input. Since we are using track power, we have it switched to input A. You would use input B if you're going with battery power. When using a heat sink, you want to look on the back side of the green rectifier circuit board. There are four black rectangles that stick out of the board. These contact points are where any possible heat could build up. So using just about any heat sink, including this simple computer heat sink, you want to make sure it gets good connection with those contact points. You can tell this heat sink is larger than necessary, but it only costs a few dollars and there's plenty of space in the tender. Now, we're ready to give it a test before putting the tender shell back on. And now all we've got to do is test our power. So we turn power on to the track. And our remote. One button, the light turns on. Push the button again and we should get forward motion. There we go. And same thing, we'll try in reverse. 
There's one button, the light turns on, and a couple more clicks and we're going in reverse. There we go. Installation is good, and now we can put the tender cover on. With the tender cover back on, we're ready to run. Have fun with your Pico trains.